I B Bio, Human Physiology Part 6, is the last of four parts covering circulation, what's known as the blood system in the IB syllabus. Human Physiology Part 6, Circulation D, this movie has its focus on the structure and function of arteries, capillaries, and veins. The essential idea is the blood system continuously transports substances to cells and simultaneously collects waste products. Here is the first of two slides that provide an outline of all the available movies for Topic 6, Human Physiology, a topic for both SL and HL students. Use the outline to find the movie you need for review. This movie is focused here. Here is the second slide of the outline for all available movies for Topic 6, Human Physiology. Remember that the blood serves as a link between external exchange surfaces and cells deep within the body, cells too deep to be served by simple diffusion from the skin surface. The external exchange surfaces are the lungs, the digestive tract, and the kidneys. Capillaries are the exchange sites between the blood and the interstitial fluid and the body cells. They are narrow structures located throughout the body totaling nearly 100,000 kilometers if all the capillaries were laid end-to-end. -end. Remember that blood is pumped by the ventricles away from the heart into arteries carrying blood away from the heart to capillary beds where the exchange of material occurs. In the lungs, oxygen diffuses into the blood while carbon dioxide diffuses out. In the digestive tract, glucose, water, amino acids are absorbed by the blood in the kidneys, not shown here, urea is released from the blood into the urine. And body cells everywhere have oxygen diffusing out of the blood into the cells, while carbon dioxide diffuses into the blood from the cells. Then the capillaries rejoin forming veins, veins which return blood to the right side of the heart. Here is the IB syllabus statement that drives this movie. Explain the relationship between the structure and function of arteries, capillaries, and veins. It's important to recognize that the basic definition of arteries and veins serves to address part of this statement. Arteries convey blood at high pressure from ventricles to the tissues of the body. Veins collect blood at low pressure from the tissues in the body and return it to the atria of the heart. Capillaries serve as the exchange site of materials between cells and the blood. With respect to the capillaries, we will have to examine structure carefully to understand their function in the exchange of nutrients and gases and wastes between the blood and body cells. Remember that the blood from the digestive tract flows directly to the liver in the hepatic portal vein. The liver regulates the nutrient load in the blood arriving from the digestive tract. The liver will remove materials from the blood or secrete molecules into the blood. Blood leaves the heart in arteries, passes to the capillaries, and then into veins. I will take these three structures in exactly this order. Notice the narrow, branched nature of the capillaries. Immediately, you should be thinking high surface area to volume ratio. This is a graph of blood pressure throughout the circulatory system. Arteries are here and veins here along the x-axis, which is the entire circuit. You can see that pressure is high in the arteries and it's pulsing between 120 millimeters of mercury when the heart is contracted, that's systole, and 80 millimeters of mercury when the heart is at rest, diastole. The pressure drops as the blood reaches the capillaries and drops further as the blood moves into the veins. The high pressure in the arteries require that arteries be thick-walled to withstand the pressure, and the low pressure in the veins require valves that prevent backflow. Pressure is measured as the force exerted by the blood on the wall of the vessel, as you can see in this image. During systole, the pressure is high in the brachial artery of the arm at 120 millimeters of mercury, while during diastole, the pressure is less at 80 millimeters of mercury. Arteries are thick-walled to withstand the pressure exerted by the 
forceful walls of the ventricles, but arteries also contain elastic tissue that recoils. The recoil of the elastic tissue in arteries helps to maintain high pressure in the arteries, moving blood rapidly to distant locations within the body. Before going too far, pay close attention to what you see in my images because you need to be able to identify blood vessels as arteries, capillaries, and veins from the structure of their walls. In this image, the thick walled artery is very clear. Notice that capillaries are composed of a single cell layer known as endothelium. The lumen of veins is more open than that of arteries. As well, veins have valves to assist with the movement of blood in a single direction, in other words, to prevent backflow of blood. In this image, you can see the thick walled artery, the more open lumen of the vein, and the capillary composed of a single cell layer. Blood pressure declines as blood exits the arteries and heads into the capillaries, and in the capillaries, the blood is no longer pulsing. As the arteries branch into arterioles and then into capillaries, the blood velocity slows and the surface area increases. Blood arrives to the body capillaries oxygenated, but departs the capillaries deoxygenated. Notice the color change in this image. In the lung capillaries, blood arrives in the arteries deoxygenated and departs in veins oxygenated. In moving from the arteries to the capillaries, velocity declines and surface area increases. As I mentioned earlier, we need to examine capillary structure carefully to understand the function of capillaries in the exchange of nutrients and gases and wastes. Here's the IB syllabus statement of relevance. Explain how exchange of nutrients, gases, and wastes takes place in capillary beds. Capillaries provide a wonderful example of the relationship between structure and function. Here's an image of a capillary. Notice its small size. Red blood cells are moving effectively in single file. In this diagram, you can see the single layer of the capillary, single cell layer of the capillary quite well. The diffusion distance between the blood and the interstitial fluid surrounding the capillary is quite short. In this diagram, the red blood cells are moving single file within the capillary. Oxygen and nutrients are moved from the blood to the interstitial fluid that surrounds the cells. Materials are exchanged by diffusion, facilitated diffusion, active transport, and penocytosis. Carbon dioxide and other wastes, urea by way of example, are taken up by the blood. In this micrograph of a capillary, you can see the single cell that makes up the wall of the capillary. The nucleus of the cell is here, and the edges of the cell overlap right here. Penocytosis serves to move materials out of the blood into the interstitial fluid surrounding the capillary. If you look closely, you can see penocytotic vesicles in the capillary wall cell. You can see that the lumen of the capillary is approximately 5 micrometers in diameter. Here is a capillary that has ruptured with red blood cells leaking out. Here is a color enhanced image of a capillary with a red blood cell within the lumen. Again, here is a review of the cross-sectional appearance of arteries, veins, and capillaries. This image of the capillary should help you see the one-cell nature of the capillary wall with the thickened regions here representing the nucleus of the cells that make up the wall of the capillary. Capillaries have permeable walls that allow for the exchange of materials between body cells and the blood in the capillary. Remember all of what blood transports, heat, glucose, amino acids, oxygen, carbon dioxide, hormones, antibodies, waste products such as urea and sodium chloride. And could you relate the solubility of these substances in water to their transport in blood? Glucose and amino acids are quite soluble in the plasma of blood, but if proteins are to be soluble, 
there are groups will need to be hydrophilic. Oxygen is not very soluble in water, but in blood, most of the oxygen is transported by hemoglobin. Here is a list of molecules transported by the blood, and don't forget that blood moves heat throughout the body. I'll let you study this slide on your own. But remember that solubility in water is important here. While there is some oxygen dissolved in the plasma of the blood, most oxygen is transported with the hemoglobin within red blood cells. Here are two graphs, one showing cross-sectional surface area and the other blood velocity through the circulatory system from arteries to capillaries to veins. Surface area increases dramatically in the capillaries to enhance exchange between blood and the interstitial fluid that bathes body cells. Blood velocity slows in the capillaries to enhance exchange between the blood and the interstitial fluid that bathes body cells. You may wonder about how it is that blood velocity slows in the capillaries. Blood pressure is declining from arteries to capillaries, but the answer to the question is a bit more complicated. There are frictional forces at work as the surface area increases. And secondly, when one arterial branches into many capillaries, velocity in each of the smaller vessels is less. The total blood flow through the capillaries, when summed, approximately equals blood velocity into and out of the capillaries. So in addition to the high surface area, the low blood velocity, and the one cell layer thick aspect of capillaries, capillaries also have clefts or gaps that lie between the cells that make up the capillary. These clefts further enhance exchange between the blood and the interstitial fluid that bathes body cells. Here is a cross-sectional diagram of a capillary, and we can see three cells here. One that has a nucleus, cell two, and cell three, and they have clefts or gaps between them, and these serve to enhance the exchange between the blood and the interstitial fluid that bathes body cells. Here is a micrograph that shows the cleft that lies between the overlapping edges of the cells that make up the capillary. So I've come back to this image to add clefts to the mechanisms by which materials are exchanged between the blood and the fluid that bathes body cells. Here is a slide that outlines the structures of capillaries that serve the function of capillaries as the site of exchange, the site of exchange of nutrients, gases, and waste. I'll let you study this slide on your own. Veins transport blood back to the heart. In this image, we can see the renal veins leaving the kidneys and the vena cava moving blood back to the right atrium. Arterioles bring blood to the capillaries and veins return blood to the heart from the capillaries. As a note, the muscles seen here can be contracted or not, thus regulating blood flow into the capillary beds. Muscles on these arterioles would be responsible for blushing or dilating vessels to release heat for thermoregulation. Remember that blood pressure in the veins is very low Thus, the structure of veins must be adapted to move blood back to the heart despite the low pressure. The open lumen of the vein reduces frictional resistance of the blood moving within the vessel. This helps to increase blood velocity as blood moves into the veins from the capillaries. Here is a nice image of a vein. You can see the wide lumen. We've come back to this image. You can see the wide lumen of the vein and the valves which prevent backflow. The valves also assist in increasing the velocity of the blood as it moves in the veins. Here's an image that show valves at work, open on the left, closed on the right. They open and closed due to differential pressure on either side of the valve. Here's another image of valves at work. On the left, it mentions that skeletal muscle contractions push 
on the walls of the vein to move blood forward in the vein. Here is a slide that shows skeletal muscle squeezing veins, assisting with the movement of blood in the veins. As long as there are valves to prevent backflow, skeletal muscle contractions, as can be seen here, serve to increase the velocity of blood back to the heart. Now keep in mind the skeletal muscle is not the muscle that lines the wall of the vein. Skeletal muscle is attached by tendon to bone for large scale motion of the body. Here is a nice image that shows the combined efforts of the valves and the skeletal muscle pushing on the walls of the vein to move the blood in the vein. In this image, on the left, we can see the normal flow of blood in a vein, while on the right, we can see a valve that's damaged. This malfunctioning valve results in twice the volume of blood falling to the next valve down. This causes the vein to bulge. This condition is known as a varicose vein. You can see it here. Varicose veins, a condition of the circulatory system, is caused by broken vein valves. In this image, one that I've shown you a number of times, we can see veins returning blood to the heart. And along the way, we see valves to ensure that blood does not flow back given the low pressure of blood in the veins. And that brings us to the end of IB Bio Human Physiology Part 6, Circulation D.